swelling of the blood vessels inside which if it goes untreated could be fatal but it is not going to happen with easy vaping don't we risk vapor accumulating in our lungs Hey folks, Corax here. You know, I frequently travel across the country helping new vapers. Speaking out against smoking and preaching the goodness of vaping, I get inundated with the above question every time. And a strong believer of vaping that I am, I spontaneously reply with Professor Ricardo Polosa's classic quote. This is ridiculous. You would get more water vapor from a nebulizer. designed to deliver copd medications that you would get from an electronic cigarette you see there is no shortage of absurdities within the asds community which is now extended to vaping us well. people at war with smoking is understandable their cause is just but when they try the same logic on vaping it becomes ridiculous What's of concern here is people identifying e-cigarette vapor as water vapor and then concluding it to fill up our lungs like a water bottle gradually if not immediately common people like you and me thinking this way is again understandable but when licensed medical professionals speak the same it gets absurd I know Where do these idiots get their degree at a ball pit at McDonald's? This report isn't just propaganda disguised as concern. It scares people away from effectively quitting real cigarettes, enabling more death. Faced with hopeful findings on vaping, they state the opposite. And not only absurd, this is then a disservice to humanity. Let us first get to know two important things on the subject. You cannot flood your lungs with liquid by inhaling anything and there is a difference between smoke and vapor and our lungs react to each differently First and foremost we should understand that inhalation of even pure water vapor will not flood the lungs unless one is drowning of course in a water body for example sea river lake etc that water in the lungs disorder occurs internally only by lungs own secretion when someone gets liquid in his or her lungs it's from an allergic reaction sickness or chronic condition causing the lungs to secrete liquids this is pulmonary edema it is an abnormal built up of fluid in the lungs this build up of fluid leads to shortness of breath pulmonary edema is often caused by congestive heart failure when the heart is not able to pump efficiently blood can back up into the veins that move blood through the lungs as the pressure in this blood vessels increase fluid is pushed into the air spaces called alveoli in the lungs this fluid reduces oxygen movement through the lungs and thus breathing becomes difficult and remember we breathe in moisture all the time thus liquids gets into the lungs more often than not and together the amount of fluid that we inhale regularly is much more than what we do with vaping way 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 more that includes water our daily showers get more water into our lungs than anything else just by normal breathing we are in taking water a leisurely swim at the pool gets water into the lungs
And how about the asthmatic patients who use nebulizers regularly? Also remember, our lungs are no Sahara desert. They are always as moist as a marshland. <laughs> so what happens when we inhale? Moisture or other particulates are simply absorbed through the thin alveolar membranes of the lungs into the bloodstream. Larger particles might not be absorbed easily. However, the lung does have a mucosal flow, allowing non-absorbable small molecules such as particles of air pollutants to be cleared. This is mucus, which can have one of several fates. A. Cuffed up. B. Swallowed, usually. Or C. Cleared by the lymphatic system. Nothing gets built up in the lungs, unless one has some sort of condition like I said earlier. Do you know the amount of moisture, particulates and water that is in the steam when we cook? That is thick. Full of grease, spices, salts, organic residues and what not. Think about the fate of chefs in a kitchen. They are constantly breathing in that heavy fog, which is much more denser than we can ever wait. You might have noticed the grease buildup surrounding the stove in your own home. If we continue with this logic, our women folk, mothers, sisters, daughters, wives would have been long dead working in the kitchen. Now let's see what's the difference between cigarette smoke and vapor from an e-cigarette. Our vapor from e-cigarettes is an aerosol mix of atomized PG and VG, along with some colorings, flavorings and nicotine. There is hardly any water in the e-liquids, and if there is, it is in negligible amounts. When vapor enters the lungs, like I stated earlier, most particulates, including nicotine, are absorbed by the alveolar membranes and enter the bloodstream. VG and PG are larger molecules and they are exhaled immediately. That's how you see the clouds, bro. Anything that the membranes don't absorb are thrown out in the form of mucus, which again can take either of the three routes. A. Cuffed up. B. Swallowed, usually. Or C. Cleared by the lymphatic system. Anyway, the particulate matter from smoking tobacco cigarette is 920 parts per million after 3 minutes of smoking. While the same with electronic cigarette is just 40 parts same after 3 minutes of vaping. So 920 and 40, which is better? Anything 40 or under is considered safe as per environment point of view. That is, if your workplace has 40 or less ppm in the air, they would not do anything, as it is perfectly safe for everyone to breathe. But remember the 2013 China report, when they had that smog problem, the air quality there then had reached 1,000 parts per million of particulate matter. Day of hazy skies on Monday. That time it was smoke essentially being trapped in a room full of smoke all the time. The More than 300 the is considered to be hazardous for breathing, humans and animals alike. Dioxide, stood and that city was forced to shut down year. schools, airports, Chinese businesses because of air pollution. Cigarette smoke is very similar to that smog. Though it may look feeble in comparison to our e-cigarette vapor, in reality, it is much thicker. And much of it stays within the lungs, not the tar. Which is why you find exhaled smoke from cigarette smoking to be lighter than what it was inhaled. The opposite is with e-cigarette. You will usually find equal quantities of exhaled and inhaled vapor. Besides, PG in our e-liquid is highly hygroscopic meaning it pulls water from its surroundings. When we vape, water is drawn from our mouth and lungs into the vapor mix. Thus, we tend to dehydrate more with vaping. And the solution is to consume enough water, especially if you're on high PG liquids. And remember, what we do know is that PG and VG 
are not going to leave a long term residue in the lungs. The fact that they are listed as verified excipients by inhalation by the IPEC demonstrates the scientific opinion that they are safe for long term use. As such, where is the scope for any excess water or any fluid build up that way? There is none, else a lot of vapors would have drowned by now. Well, let's recapitulate, shall we? We cannot make our lungs flood, except by drowning. E-cigarette vapor has hardly any water in it. We inhale more fluids by regular activities than by vaping. For example, taking a shower, swimming, cooking, visiting the sauna, using a nebulizer, etc. Tobacco cigarette smoke has more particulates, 920 parts per million, than e-cigarette vapor, 40 parts per million. And our e-liquids are hygroscopic rather than moisturizing. So folks, asking questions is okay. We need to know what we are doing, right? Which is why when our friends, family, the common public at large is asking us about the water in lungs aspect of vaping, it is okay. All we need is to educate them. Tell them it is not going to happen with vaping. Because firstly, the vapor here has minuscule amounts of water. Secondly, it has PG, propylene glycol, which is actually an antivirus, antibacterial agent. In fact, we are thus protecting our lungs rather than filling it up with water. Hope that makes sense. And thanks for watching folks. Subscribe for more. Remember, vaping is a healthier alternative and we have the right to make that choice.